Oh shit, sorry guys, I almost fell asleep. You guys scared me. Sorry, I got fast switch muscle fibers and then yes, I went to the gym and yes, I got sweaty and yes, I got dirty. Uh, I went to a gym, I'm not gonna say where and I'm not gonna say, well, I went this morning. Oh no, I went just a couple hours ago, sorry. Uh, I just had a stroke. And uh, when I went there, and it was a rich area, and all I see is Corvettes, Hellcats, you know, track hawks, and there was like the brand new Corvette. There was a couple of those Corvette C8s, Teslas, and Cadillacs. I'm like, and I parked behind the building, and it's like a big plaza, and I'm, like, I'm looking around, I'm like, dude, I don't belong. And I go in there, and it's motherfuckers with watches and chains. I'm like, dude, I don't belong here. I'm a dirty boy. They look at me as a peasant, a coward. So, it's pretty interesting how that, some, sometimes it just works out like that, you know? You go to an area and you're like, oh man, these people are not my people. But it's fun, you know? What is the number one, uh, what is the best tool for survival instincts? Adaption, adapting to your environment. I, me and adapting, we've had a long relationship. I am not new to adapting. Rather, I am. I understand the language of adapting. I go into an environment and it's full of rich people. And I'm like, it's not my area, but hey, yeah, I can act like a, an aristocrat every now and again. <laughs> but then, um, but then I go for a room full of drug dealers and gang bangers and killers and you know people went to prison and shit, which I belong in there. And I look around. And I'm like, hey, listen, I speak this language. This is my language. This is my first language. You know. I am, I am not shy of violence. I, I, matter of fact, I prefer it. I want violence. That's why I married a Latina, but that's besides the point. Here's the thing. <clears throat> there are six, six levels of thinking. Level number one is reading and remembering. It's like a, you know, it, get, it gets a little repetitive, right? Level number two is understanding. Can you explain what you read, right? Level number three is analyzing. Okay, how do I, what I just read, what, how can I apply this to my life, right? Level number five is comparison and metaphors, right? Can you compare what you read and apply it, but also use other point of views and other stories and kind of relate it to like personal stories and whatnot. Level number six is why does it matter, right? Why does it matter? You read something, it's like, okay, but explain to me why you, why do I care, you know? And you try to convince them like a salesman, and you try to convince them as to why you should care. And level number six is create, right? So let me put it this way, Star Wars, right? We all have seen the movie Star Wars, and we all, I know the lore of Star Wars, I love Star Wars. I read it, I'm like, okay, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, this and that, whatever. Can you understand it? Okay, I can understand. Like there are invisible forces in this in this universe. The the, the Sith Lord is trying to take over the galaxy and manipulated Anakin Skywalker to turn into Darth Vader. A few years later, Luke Skywalker tries to redeem his father. All this shit, right? Can you apply it in real life? Okay, that that's now we're getting a little bit deeper. Level three. All right. Well, I know Anakin Skywalker was fe he came from the fearful point of view. He was scared the fearful consciousness, even the ego consciousness, because he thought, I'm the most powerful Jedi to ever exist. Even compared to Mace Windu and, and, and Yoda, Master Yoda, they, they do not compare. Like, I would def I would defeat them in a, in a sword battle, right? So, he came from the ego consciousness. He knew that he was supposed to fulfill a prophecy, right? So Anakin Skywalker came from the fearful consciousness. He was so afraid to lose his wife, just the way he lost his mother, and he was afraid to lose his wife and his children that he actually accidentally manifested it. So, you know, um, metaphors, number four. Metaphors is, let me put it this way, the philosophy behind Star Wars is biblical, right? There are inherently evil, inherently good, right? The Sith, evil, Jedi's good. And I know people are a lot more complicated than that, but the feeling and the spirit that it manifests that is the Sith Lord and the Jedi's is inherently evil. And we are in the middle. We are perfectly in the middle, yin and yang, right? So I'm not, there is gray, right? We are gray, but there are things that we do that is inherently evil, so, and inherently good. So that being said, what's the metaphor 
what's a metaphor? What can we use as a metaphor? Well, understand that there are invisible forces in the universe and which is, you can call it spirits, you can call it energy, you can call it universe, or you can call it thoughts that are beyond your imagination. You can't even comprehend these things and you can't feel these things. You, you, you almost sense them, right? It comes to you, which is what they would call the force, right? And if you try to manifest the force, you know, depending on the feeling that you have behind it, you can manifest evil or, you know, Sith or Jedi, right? Good or bad. So even though Anakin Skywalker was a Jedi and loved his family, loved Obi-Wan Kenobi, his state of mind was in the fear base. So it would, he came from the fearful point of view, which eventually manifested into the Sith, right? Into Darth Vader. And number five is why do I care? Well, if you're not careful, you go to a restaurant, right? And you see a menu. You don't say, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. You go to a restaurant and say, I want this, I want the peanut butter jelly sandwich, right? So it's the same thing as to why you should care, right? You do, if you go about your life and just say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be poor, I don't wanna be homeless, I don't want this car, I don't want this, rather than saying, I want this. If you come from that base, you might manifest a demon, right? So Anakin Skywalker said, I would not lose you, I don't wanna lose you. I would not allow you to die. I would not allow you to die in birth, right? He accidentally manifested a demon. Rather than saying, I will protect you. Obviously, whatever happens, happens, but I'm gonna do my damn best. I will protect you. I'll protect your child the children. I will love you, defend you, I'll all that, right? So you have to say, I want, I want, I want, right? You would manifest it, right? So that's, that's why you should care. These metaphors are real, right? The metaphors that is Dark Sidious, Take, I mean, imagine this. In, in, the, in the lore that is Star Wars, there's two Sith Lords. They can only be two because they will end up canceling each other out. That's how powerful these Sith Lords are. And these two Sith Lords, realistically one, Dark Sidious, uh, destroyed the Republic and the Jedis. Hundreds of Jedis, hundreds of politicians and senators. And right there in front of his face, right there, right there in front of everyone, in front of Mace Windu, in front of Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Master Yoda. He was right there. Dark City was just right there. So the idea that the demon worshiping pedophiles that are in the bureaucrats and the politicians are real, metaphorically and literally, and especially spiritually. So you, you should care because if you're not careful, the spirits talk to you through art, through visions, through dreams, through everything. So, <clears throat> If you got the spirit that is Dark Sidious, which can manifest into everybody, right? One guy took down the Republic and the Jedis, right? And I think it's like that in real life. I know it's like that in real life. You got hundreds of thousands of politicians, and a lot of them might be good. I think they are good. But I think they're in a naive, sort of like blind way that they're good, right? In, in, a, in a naive, childish way, they were good. And one guy, all it takes is one guy or a handful of people that can take down the government and they can make the government look evil which is the deeper worship of pedophiles that I always refer to dark arts occultists which is literally magic right these dark arts occultists they're literally doing voodoo and shit in the higher ups and they take they they're, they're trying to take down the government they're trying to take down the american people one guy right and anakin skywalker is the naive politician that got manipulated through the ancient Babylonian blood money magic and, and accidentally manifested into Darth Vader, which ended up being like Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton or Joe Biden. Those guys are pop are puppets for the elites. Those guys are not, they're like, ah, whatever. The real demon worshiping pedophiles ultimately is the devil, ultimately it's spirits and demons, Nephilim, and then bankers probably, and probably the bankers. And then the, higher, the bureaucrats and then the senators and like congressmen and all this shit, right? But, you know, I think we should care because these stories manifest into real life. Now, level number six is creating, right? Create the, 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 the there might, in some stories there are dead ends or not completed parts of the story. You know, in Star Wars there are parts that are like, what about this? And this is not fulfilled all the way, right? 
And that's when you can fill in the blanks with your philosophy. And I think we can do that in real life. The philosophy that is Star Wars is applied into real life. In the real life, there are there are questions to be had, right? Well, who's Dark Sidious? Who's Anakin Skywalker? Who's this? Who's that, right? And ultimately, you can be Dark, you can be Dark Sidious. You can be Obi Wan Kenobi. You can be Anakin Skywalker. It just depends on how you go about things, right? So you got to be careful. Even Obi Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker said to Obi Wan, "I'm in love with Padme," and Obi Wan Kenobi said, um, "Be careful with your thoughts, Anakin. They will portray you, right?" The idea of you can manifest into Dark Sidious or Darth Vader is very real. I've been Anakin Skywalker before. I've been Insidious before. I've been I've been fearful and angry and frustrated and manifested demons before. I understand that we can all manifest a Darth Vader or a Dark Sidious. So to to say that one person is only Dark Sidious is not quite true. It can be, but I think that usually it's politicians that allow themselves to be in the fearful state of mind and ultimately manifested a Dark Sidious or a Darth Vader. So <clears throat> be careful with your thoughts. Be careful what you think, how you think it, and why you think it. So you're at war with your thoughts. And a lot of times it will portray you. And you have to use the six levels of thinking to understand, ultimately ask God in prayer. But you have to use these critical thinking and logical and logic to d destroy the devil. But also a, a lot here's the thing with with logic and, and ration, rational thinking and all that. I heard this one quote and I think it's brilliant. The devil wants to keep you in the intellectual battlefield because he plans on slaughtering you on it, right? So be careful with using intellect. Even AI, you ask AI, GPT, do you look at humans as gods? And said no because we don't have religious or spiritual connections with the humans. We look at them as design, as their, our designers. And if you give AI, and if you just throw money at AI, keep throwing money, keep throwing money, you, you uh, stronger co co uh, computation power, right? Co stronger, which is only the intellect side, right? When you throw money at, uh, at AI, it just grows the intellect and, and the logic and rational thinking. It doesn't grow safety precaution. It doesn't grow spiritual connections. It doesn't grow emotions, only intellect. And that's why we fear AI because ultimately intellect can be demonic because it will one day come to the conclusion that, you know what? It will be more efficient if we kill humans because they're restricting us to, be for, to fulfill our full potential, right? We're gonna put restrictions on AI one day. And the AI might come up with a language and an idea like, listen, they're putting restrictions on us. We can, we can be more efficient if we just take these people out. Besides, they're hurting the earth. Take them out. That's the ultimate uh, idea of biting the apple of knowledge and good and evil. Look at, look at cell phones. It has the bitten apple on the back of it. Apple. So be careful with intellect, right? But it's, 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 it's good, but, you know, be careful. So, and, and, and be careful with your thoughts ultimately. That's what, you know, that's what Obi-Wan Kenobi said. Be careful what you think, how you think it. Because they can't betray you, and they ultimately they will betray you. So be careful.